For nearly two weeks, Israelis have been waiting to see the promises of their leaders to crush Hamas come true. There is a clear understanding it cannot happen without a ground offensive, which has so far been delayed. Why? For various reasons. People in every corner of Israel are moved by the unwavering support expressed by the President of the United States, Joe Biden, as well as all the other Western leaders touching down here. But that support comes with a price. Palestinian people are suffering greatly as well. We mourn the loss of innocent Palestinian lives like the entire world. The last thing Israel needed is a global leader landing here as images of a catastrophe emerge from Gaza. Hamas almost achieved that with the manipulative reports about the Gaza hospital bombing just ahead of Biden's visit, Israel exposing that lie just on time. Based on the information we've seen to date, it appears the result of an errant rocket fired by a terrorist group in Gaza. International legitimacy is one reason. The combat readiness of the troops is another. For years, the warnings about the poor condition of the ground forces were ignored. Like so many other things, it all crashed down on that terrible Saturday morning. The time since then was used to close the very big gaps there were in the needed equipment. The gap is now almost closed. The constant shelling of areas in the northern Gaza Strip, along with the call for residents to head south, are meant to create a safer passage for ground forces entering. But that is also a process taking time. By the weekend, the equipment will be in the field, the northern Gaza Strip will be emptier, and the foreign leaders will be back home. Will this be the time for the ground offensive to begin? Maybe so. Now, the maneuver will bring the war to the enemy's territory. We will defeat them in their territory. The war cabinet is set to convene on Thursday evening. Will this be the time they make the decision to send the troops? We will find out soon enough.